we are smack bang in the middle of the fifth season and things are really heating up but today i thought we'd step back look at the bigger picture look at all the players who have come through the youth academy and see where are they now who are still at the club who are making it who have been deemed not good enough and have already left and where are the players that we were forced to sell by the board have they made a mark in europe so far or are they stuck in some sort of under 19s team out in europe just longing to come home So it's development review time again and we started off in the same fashion as we used to do. We started off with the youth intake preview for this season. It looks like another good one with a good central midfielder, a good striker and maybe even a good keeper. But we're not going to keep here for too long because like I said in the intro we are going to take one step back, look at the players who have come and gone during the years and the players who are still here so let's take one step back and look at what sort of players we have managed to develop so far and i thought that we would do it by dividing the players into different groups where we have the originals which are the talents of the players under 21 that was in the squad when we started the save and then we've had four youth intakes 2020, 21, 22 and 23 and see, see how good these players have become and how many of them are still at the team and sort of where the rest of them have gone. And I think it's fair to say that the two groups on the left are very much dominating. That is natural in a sense because they were the first out there and those players have become the oldest so far and sort of developed the most as well. But I'm starting to lean more and more towards that our first youth intake was exceptional with five players currently in the first team but if we take one step back and start by looking at the originals we have three players left in the bp first team from the original bunch andre piconel is a solid keeper for us he's our number one he's played 11 under 21 caps for sweden and he's got a bit of a room left for development which makes me think that he could be our number one keeper for many years to come. Axon Wallenboy is a bit of the same story with him. He has turned into a very solid Altsvenska left back. Good defensively tackling 12, marking 11, positioning 11, good going forward, crossing 11, dribbling 12 and technique 13 and nice physical attributes with acceleration 14 pace 13 and stamina 13. if we look at the third and final from the original group it's Kreve Kreve Kreve's the club's leading goal scorer historically which is quite a feat when you are only 21 years old good finishing of 15 nice heading of 16 and a nose for goals he scores them for fun 19 goals so far in 20 games in this season's swedish premier division absolutely fantastic player if we look at the original players who are no longer with the club there is a surprising amount of players who are actually playing at the top two tiers of swedish football at the least a couple of these names not even I recognize them because they never made any games for us but it's kind of nice to see that they are professional footballers I'm not going to go into too much detail with many of these players but this is the first one Felix Stringborn currently playing for Iko Brage in the second tier Adam Hellqvist in Degefors in the top tier Felix Bernarp with Falkenberg in the top tier Ahmed Bona who is with Kalmar in the second tier. Jesper Cisse, who is currently with Kalmar in the top tier. Theo Granborg with Halmstad in the second tier. And now things are getting more interesting. Christopher Grauberg Lepic, he's at Melbourne City. He moved from us to 
Dahl could in the second tee but managed to secure a move from there to Melbourne City where he is actually playing 3 games and 13 appearances last season and now the players are getting more successful moving forward. Oscar Falenius, uh, Cagliari in Italy Serie A and he is playing games. I don't know if you remember but we lost him to Hecken for 325k early on in the save. The board simply sold him. He was a complete success that which earned him a move to Inter Milan. He wasn't good enough to play there which doesn't come as a real surprise but after that he has become a solid Serie A player. First for Torino alone and now with Cagliari. First alone and now uh, on another loan deal. Yardel Kanga though is the most successful one. At age 18 he's played 11 caps for Sweden and 13 under 21 caps. He has kind of recently secured a move from Malmö who the board sold him to from us to FC Bayern Munich where he's currently in their second team. He hasn't managed to break through into the first team yet but I think it's only a matter of time before he does that. I have to mention Lucas Forsberg as well because he didn't he wasn't in the original gang but he doesn't come from one of our youth intakes instead we signed him at an early age for our academy from local team Solentuna and he has actually started to make a name for himself in Germany. He went from us to Borussia Dortmund on a free where he didn't play very much played two games and now he's moved to Borussia Mönchengladbach where I think that he will play more. He has come in off the bench in the first two games of the season but I think that he will play more going forward. Very happy to see that. So nine players altogether playing professionally at other clubs which is at least three or four more than I actually thought that we had. If we leave the original group and go into the first intake and look at them we have five players left at the club and all of them are members of the first team and I think you recognize all these names because they have played quite big parts in the success of recent seasons for us. So the first one to look at is Gustav Buhmann and maybe you don't really recognize his face which is due to a Sealand face pack mishap which wipes all the old faces and I had to replace them with new ones and since I'm a sucker for reality I'd like to think of this as a major intra-team beauty operation failure. Doesn't that sound reasonable and realistic? But let's let's just ignore that mishap and look at Gustav Bullmann. He has turned into a hell of a player for us by now. Very important central midfielder with strength in his attacking game. Even though I think that maybe he isn't producing exactly the kind of points I'd like him to do. We will see what happens after the tactical changes I have made recently. I hope that he will produce a little more. But bit of potential left to develop and I hope that he will be with us for many years to come. If we move on and look at Jakob Eklund it's a bit of the same story with him there. He has scored one goal and one assist in 21 games which isn't a lot but on paper he is looking good. I think he lacks a bit of technicality that we will keep working on that and he has potential ability to improve so hopefully he will do that going forward as well. If we look at the third player, it's Levis Keflesis, the man with a very difficult name to pronounce. He on the, hand, on the hand has 5 goals and 6 assists in 8 games so he is producing very nicely and his strength is obviously his jumping reach of 20 but he is scoring goals with his feet as well. He is he is lacking a bit of game time because the competition is so fierce but we I think we will use him more going forward and the fourth guy is one of the reasons that he isn't playing that much John Tete many goals so far this season as many goals as caps even though he does not know how to finish the ball to save his life he scores them anyway he's a bit of an enigma but a good one we really enjoy him 
And then we have the final one of the bunch, Marcus Hallgren. What a player, what a player, what a player. I cannot stress that too much. We have sold him to Borussia Dortmund, but we got the opportunity to loan him back again. And he is phenomenal. Dribbling, passing, technique. Very good techni technically, but amazing mentally. Decisions, leadership of the ball, teamwork, vision. He is as close to a complete deep line forward as I think that we are going to get. So five players in the first team and one player who are pro playing professionally elsewhere. And that's Omar Granberg, the right back who really never made it at us. Hopefully he can make it at another club as a professional at least, even though he was never good enough for us. We won't go into this much detail with the rest of the three intakes because there isn't that much to report on. We will look at the best player from each intake, which is Carlson from the second intake, Andersson from the third, and Holm from the fourth. And let you know what I think about those players moving forward. So we start off with Victor Carlson, the winger who I'm trying to turn into a right back. It's going slowly and I'm not sure if we are going to get there. But I decided to loan him out to Helsingborg to see if he would develop there. Not a lot happening. A couple of slightly upwards pointing yellow arrows tells me that he is developing at least a little. But they are using him as a winger. So I'm not sure if I made myself perfectly clear when I loaned him out. It's probably on me. But at least on paper, he is supposed to have a bit of uh, development left in him. But there's a long way if we are going to be able to use him as a right back. If we move one step forward to the next youth intake, it's Kalle Andersson time. And this guy is getting closer and closer to playing actual first team football for us as a advanced forward. Which would mean that Keplesas would get even further from playing. So... Nice acceleration, nice aggression, good determination. He's actually a decent finisher, so I think he will get a couple of chances at least this season. And then we have maybe the best one to come through the youth intakes if we ignore the first one, and that's Isaac Holm. First touch 17, passing 16. Very good for a centre midfielder. Lacks a bit of vision though, lacks a bit of off the ball, composure, anticipation. He will need to become a smarter player if he is going to compete for the positions in centre midfield where I think that our competition is the fiercest. But he is still looking like a great player at age 17 and I will probably give him a couple of chances in the first team this season just to see if he swims or if he sinks. So, as you see, the academy is producing players for our first team, even though I would like it to be maybe two or three players coming through the worst intake and four or five players coming through the good intakes uh, compared to the situation now. We've had five players come through the first one, but literally one player maximum coming through the rest of them, which will mean that we will not be able to keep this high standard of players simply by the fact that we won't have any good players left in the team so hopefully these will improve going forward I have faith in our kind of new head of youth development and I hope that we get better moving forward but that's it for the development part of the episode let's move forward here so if we move on to today's game we are once again playing fierce rivals Icor they have proven to not be the easiest comp competitor to deal with but hopefully we can stay up here in this top of the league battle you know last time when we lost to Malmö I said to myself why are we keeping playing this almost tactic why are we not trying to go all the way out so I've changed the tactic up we are now going with two central midfielders and an attacking midfielder in front of him a Carrilero which is a role I haven't really tried before, but it should fit this tactic in Jakob Eklund, who is supposed to move out wide and help Björkström. And then we have upped the tempo even more, just to see if we can outplay our opponents, out-tempo them. 
that, that has always been the idea of our attacking play and when it comes to defense then we are pushing even further up to see if we can stress the opponents both going forwards and in defense so let's see if this actually works out. This is a bit of a theoretical <laughs> theoretical construction for me. This could backfire completely. But I know that I have been saying that we just need to get slightly better players and then we will go full out and play the tactic that we want to play. And then we went to Malmö and lost with a large margin playing a football that we really don't want to stand for it's it's one step towards where we want to go but now i thought that we go all the way out if you know what i mean really try this really try to play high tempo really try to outplay them really try to run them completely tired both in offense and defense and we will see if this works out so far so good uh no goals for arco at least uh, this is an important game as well so if we would win this one then we would really be in contention for that league title with 10 games to go and here's Keflesus is he through he shoots but it's deflected okay but maybe it's only my imagination but I think we are doing this slightly quicker than we were before And I'm not sure that's a good thing or if it's a bad thing because we need to keep up with our own pace as well. That's the idea that we manage to keep keep up with the pace and the opponents, they struggle. Hopefully that is what this tactic will do as well. Oh, a long ball through. Kerebi, 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 Kerebi. He almost always puts those sort of chances away, but not this time. The keeper stood in his way, even though I started singing decent chance for them but I think we have been the better team so far remember that this is a top of the league team that we are playing and as I say that they get really close I thought that one went in a top of the line clash top of the league clash here with very much at stake both a bit of my pride as I have changed our tactics and also points wise they come no nice deflection from our play we can we win this one no they keep it and we have it with a decent amount of men going forward we get the ball to Hal Green out to Björkström and nothing. I would have enjoyed sort of a cheeky highlight, maybe a cross in and a finish from us, but no. We have the ball here instead though. Pindel, Halgren. Oh nice ball. Ballaball. We won it up. That was lovely play. Left back Ballaball makes it 1-0 after a lovely play in the final third. Is that even a back heel? It might have been a cheeky back heel assist. Look at that. Yes, it is absolutely beautiful from Halgen. And Valenboy gives us the lead. Beautiful. We're very close to the half time whistle as well. And there it is. One in at half time. If we look at XG, it's been fairly even. Let's tell the players that we are happy with this. And there we go for the second half. Can we keep this up or will it be a reaction? Will they be better in the second half? We will see. Free kick for them. Oh, a bit of pinball there, but it ends up an eye corner. We get it out of the box and that ends the highlight. Okay, good. Let time run away a bit here. So 1.62 XG for them kind of tells the story that they they aren't really getting what they deserve, but I think it's been fairly even. They've only had one shot on tar target though. So they haven't really been that close in my opinion. But here they come again. Their winger beats his man, gets the ball in. Oh. 
Shambles in defense. We are nowhere near picking him up because we are looking at the other guy. All of our defenders are looking at the other guy. Mm. It beats his man there. Pigonel saves it. But no one is there to pick up the deflection. And all square with 25 minutes to go. Now I don't feel quite as happy anymore considering our plays are close to death, most of them. Uh, this sort of high-paced football takes, it takes its toll on our players as well. Couple of substitutions, maybe. What if we try this guy as an engage? Uh, let this guy roam around a bit to see if we get a little bit more movement in central midfield but a more stationary attacking midfielder uh, and let's move these guys to deep line forward so we can get a bit more link up play should we make any changes as well i don't know let's keep these guys on these are the best we have even though they are tired give them a couple of minutes with this tactical tweak and we will see what happens so a corner 10 minutes left in Dell sends it in and they win it that's not the outcome I was hoping for just find a gash oh Picunel picks it up I got really worried there that they were going to score another chance for them but Picunel saves it I think Picunel is keeping us in the game at the moment he is one good little keeper Lombolab, Keflesus, Halgrian, out to Wallenborg, back in centrally to Findel. Mm. A through ball attempt, but we didn't really get to it. Here we go again, Keflesus, nice ball there, nice passing. Not the best finish from Krebs though. Switch these guys around. I don't love Findel up in that role. Ekdal to Fintel to Browning. Ball is through Halgrian. Oh, I think we've looked better since we made those tactical tweaks with the Angange and the uh, deep playing forwards. That could just be pure coincidence. But I think we've looked slightly better. Here they come. Let's avoid losing this in the final few minutes, shall we? Okay. That was your take on that, Fintel. Okay. Final minutes, this is most likely going to end 0-0, zero, zero, and as I, uh, one one I mean, and as I say that they have a chance, but we win it. Can we counter on them? Can I be? Cliff Flizzers! 2-1 in the 91st minute. Now let's just end this game. I didn't see that one coming. We hit them so quickly on the break here. How again? Out to Krebi. Krebi finds Keflesos. Keflesos is all alone with the keeper. Doesn't make a mistake. 2-1. What a glorious finish to this game. This means that if it stays this way, we are very much in the running to win the league. With 10 games left though, so a lot could go wrong. A normal chance again. Björkström. Krebi. And a corner. That's the way to go. Waste the time. Isherwood. Isherwood with a nice finish. And Browning back to Picornell. Mm, why didn't you just pass the open defender there? Why did you have to hoof it away? <sighs> corner for them with nearly nothing left on the clock. Surely they cannot score here no we get the ball away blow the whistle ref blow the whistle they are passing it back maybe they don't want an equalizer oh i thought the game was over but it keeps going feels like forever now come on Full time, yes, we win it. 
two, one, and we really look good after those tactical tweaks. I'm not going to take credit for that. That was probably mostly luck, but this leaves us in a good position going forward. We are now top of the league, even though we've played a couple of more games than the other teams around us. But this is going to be one exciting final third of this league season. I hope you are enjoying yourself as much as I am. I will see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.